Today we're going to look at how to build our custom castle using SketchUp for schools. One of the first things we're going to look at doing is creating the walls to our castle. In order to do this, we are going to need to get into a top view in our sketch. So we'll select top view. And we're going to use the rectangle tool to draw the bottom area or base of our castle. From here, we'll click on the origin and drag out. Now we're going to give our castle a base of six feet, comma, six feet. That will identify both the length and width of our base. By selecting enter, that'll lock the dimensions in. From here, we can rotate our sketch and see that we have our model, Mike, in the middle. We'll select Mike, and now we can get rid of him. The next step of this is to give our base some height. So we're going to go ahead and use our push-pull, drag our base model up, and give that a dimension of 3 feet. Select Enter to lock that in. The next part of this is going to be able to create the interior walls of the castle. So again, we'll go ahead and find our offset tool. Using the offset tool, we'll select the on top portion and drag in and give the interior walls a dimension of six inches. Select enter to lock your dimension into place. Now that we have our interior walls defined, we can use our push pull to drag the middle down towards the base. You'll want to be careful you don't go too far, otherwise you will go down through the bottom of your actual model. For this, we're going to give this a specific dimension of 2 feet, 9 inches. Enter. What that will do is drop the middle down, but not too far where we go through the bottom of our actual model. The next step of this is going to be create the doorway. In order to create the doorway, I'm going to go ahead and look at the top view. And we're going to use our line tool for this. We're going to find the midpoint, and we're going to draw a line straight down to our other midpoint. From here, we have created two rectangles off to the right and left. We're now going to identify the second midpoint and draw our line, and we'll do the same thing over here on the other side. By doing this, we've created several profiles that we can use. We'll grab the eraser tool and erase that center line that we created. What that will allow us to do is to use the middle profile here to push pull down to our interior surface. So we'll select this, drag it down, and select. You've now created your walls to your castle. Now before moving on, one of the most important steps of this is to make this a group so that when we do the towers, we'll be able to extrude those towers without any problems. So what we're gonna go ahead and look at doing here is we're gonna triple click on our model. Once your model is selected, what we'll want to go ahead and do is right click and make this a group. At this point, our whole walls or our custom castle walls are now grouped together and allowing us to make our towers. At this point, we are ready to move on. Part two of our custom castle is going to allow us to draw the towers on the four corners of our walls. Now that we've made our base model or our walls a group, this will allow us to create the towers without any problems. The first thing we're going to want to look at doing is rotating our shape so that we can see the bottom right corner of our custom castle walls. From here, we're going to go ahead and select the circle tool. We're going to go ahead and grab that middle origin right on that endpoint. If you are not on the blue axis, you can use the right and left arrow keys to cycle through to make sure that you are on the correct viewpoint in order to create your custom castle tower. So we're gonna go ahead and click the endpoint and we're gonna drag our circle out. We're gonna go ahead and give our radius for our towers 12 inches. So we'll go ahead and type in 12 and select enter. The next step for this is to go ahead and use our push pull in order to create the height of the tower walls. Now, if we did not make our tower walls an actual group, we would have issues with push pulling this up through the middle of those walls. But now that we've grouped this, we're going to go ahead and use the push pull, select the circle, and we're going to drag that upwards for a height of five feet. So we'll use the five foot and enter. Now the next step, in order to duplicate this three additional times, what we're going to go ahead and do is double click our tower. Once your tower is selected, we'll right click 
and find make a component. We're going to go ahead and call this tower. And that will allow us to duplicate this as we move forward. So now that we have a component, we'll go ahead and select OK. And now we have a component that can be copied as we move along. So we're going to go ahead and rotate so that we can see the bottom of our actual tower here. Now we're going to go ahead and select that tower. We're going to use the move tool here. But if we decide to move this at this point, that tower will move from one corner to the other. In order to duplicate this, we're going to need to hit the control key on your keyboard. And you should see a little plus symbol show up next to the move tool. Now we're going to go ahead and select our endpoint. And as we move that tower over, it'll allow us to place it on an additional endpoint. So we'll go ahead and do that again. Select. Select the move tool. Make sure you have the control button hit. We'll select the center and drag it down. One more time. Select the move tool. Hit the control button and move that endpoint over. Now from here, as we rotate back, we have four components, all named the same thing tower. So we're going to go ahead and use the offset tool. And we're going to go ahead and select this component. Now, once we select this component, what that will allow us to do is duplicate all four sides. So in order to do this, I'm going to double click on that. That's going to put me into edit mode where I can go ahead and edit this actual component. So I'm going to select the offset tool again. And notice all four are now selected. I'm going to click and drag in. We're going to offset this six inches. Now, at first looking at that, it may look like it's a little bit too small. So if we want to go back, we're going to undo that. And let's do an offset again. But this time, let's go ahead and only offset that three inches. See if that looks a little bit better. Not too bad. Let's try it one more time. Let's go ahead and offset and I think we're going to stick with four inches for the inside part of your tower. Now that we have the inside diameter, what we're going to look at doing is using the push pull, grab the interior part of your circle and let's drop that down six inches. Now that we have created the towers to our castle, we're ready to move on. Before doing so though, we'll want to go ahead and click off of that sketch. And now you'll see you have four towers attached to your walls. For part three of our custom castle, we're going to look at creating or drawing the center building within our custom castle. Now, in order to do this, we had already grouped our walls, which will not allow us to edit this at this point. So if we tried to grab the push pull tool and select the center here, nothing would actually happen. What we're going to need to do is we're going to go ahead and double click on that base model. That will put us into edit mode where we can actually go ahead and edit our structure at this time. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the top view here. Using our offset tool, we're going to go ahead and select the base. First, we'll need to make sure we double click and go into edit. Offset. And from here, we're going to go ahead and offset this to create the little building in the middle of our actual castle. Now, in order to do this, we're going to kind of drag that in. And for this one, we're going to go ahead and offset this guy, let's say one foot, three inches. That'll create the center of our building. From here, we're going to go ahead and use the push pull, select the center building. And when we drag it up, we're going to want to go ahead and make sure we click on that midpoint. That'll ensure that our center building is the same height as our walls to our castle. Now from here, what we'll want to go ahead and do is create the actual top or roof. So we're going to go ahead and use our line tool for this. And we're going to select the end and we're going to draw an X right on top of our, our building here. By drawing the X, we're going to be able to go ahead and use the move tool to take those lines and pull them up. Now when you do that, you're going to want to make sure that we pull them up along that blue axis. So we'll find the move tool click right on that end point, and we're going to go up. You can see right now I'm on that green axis, not what we really want. Okay, if we go over, we can get onto the red axis. What we want to make sure is that we are on that blue axis. So we're going to go ahead and drag that up, and we're going to give this a height of two feet. 
Once you do that, you have created the roof to your building. So we're going to go ahead and use the selection tool here, click off of our sketch, and you have now created the building in the middle of your castle. Now that we've created our custom castle, what we're going to look at doing is duplicating this two more times in, a, in order to create the overall final project. So the first thing we're going to go ahead and do is using the selection tool, we're going to highlight the entire castle and then rotate so we can see the bottom right tower. From here, we'll select our move tool. Make sure you hit the control button to make a copy. And we're going to go ahead and select that right endpoint of the tower. We're going to go ahead and slide over and make sure you get that red axis. And we're going to type in six feet. Enter. What that will do is duplicate our tower. Now, what we're going to want to look at doing from here is duplicating this one more time. So I'm going to go ahead and slide over. Again, we'll grab the move tool. Make sure we hit the control button again. And we're going to grab the endpoint in that tower as well. Slide that one over an additional six feet and select enter. Take a look at what your castle looks like now. You're going to see that we have three of our castles that we have made. Now we can make some minor modifications to this. We're going to remove some of these interior walls here and make some minor adjustments. In order to do this, we're going to want to get into a position where we can see the interior of our wall. From here, what we'll look at doing is using our rectangle tool and selecting the bottom left corner and drawing a rectangle to create a profile. After creating that profile, we'll use our push pull and drag that back. Now, as you notice, we're having some difficulty and it's kind of just adding on. It's not actually removing any of that actual material. So I'm going to undo what we just did. One of the things we are going to have to look at really doing here is double clicking on our model. And that's going to put us into edit view. Otherwise, we cannot actually edit our original model. So once we get into edit view, then we can go back and select the rectangle. Let's draw that rectangle again. Use the push pull and drag that back until we get to that gray portion. You'll see now it's kind of deleted for us. You will notice that there's a couple different lines here from where that wall previously was existing. That's no problem. Just use the eraser tool, select the lines, and remove them from your project. Once we have that completed, the next thing we're going to want to look at doing here is we're going to go ahead and rotate around again and use the selection key, click off, and double click on the second wall. We're going to repeat the same steps we just did using the rectangle. Draw a rectangle, use the push pull, and drag it back. Once you see that offset limit, go ahead and click, grab the eraser tool, and erase the lines. Now, while we're already in edit mode here, we might as well go ahead and do our second wall. So we'll go ahead and grab the rectangle, draw your rectangle, push pull, drag it back, and select. Grab your eraser tool, and go ahead and delete. Now, one of the things we can look at doing here while we're here is if we want to open up our walls using the push pull, we can actually take that front wall and we're going to drag that down till it says on edge. And we're going to do that for the second one as well. Now, once we have that done, we can go ahead and grab our eraser tool and delete some of those lines. We'll create a drawbridge later on but for right now. We're going to leave that alone. Now, as we rotate one more time, you'll see we have one more wall. So we'll use the selection key, double click to go into edit mode, grab the rectangle, and draw your rectangle. Use the push pull to drag it back, and then grab your eraser to erase those lines. And we can rotate to see what our castle actually looks like. Now, you will notice you do have a line right here. We can go ahead and get rid of that guy. And we can go ahead and take a look at the other one as well. Grab your eraser tool and erase that line as well. Remove edit mode by clicking off using the selection tool. And you can now see we have a castle that is 
three of them combined together. We can go ahead and add a couple other things to this as we move forward with our design. Now that we have duplicated our castle, we're going to look at modifying the middle uh, building that we have created. We're going to scale this up a little bit and then add a little opening for a little walkthrough. So what we're going to need to do here is we're going to need to look at the front of our actual tower here. And in that middle building, we're going to go ahead and use the selection tool. And with our selection tool, what we'll want to go ahead and do is triple click in order to edit the middle part of our castle. From here, we're going to need to select all of the sides. So there are a total of eight sides to this actual building. In order to do that, I can click on the front and then by holding down the control key on the keyboard, I can select multiple faces. So I'm going to rotate, even though I'm still holding the control key, I'm going to rotate around so I can see all sides and make sure they're all selected. Once they are all selected, the next thing I'm going to want to look at doing is getting into a view where I can see the front. And I'm going to use a scale tool. So under your move tool, you're going to see that there's this scale. When you select the scale, what we're going to want to do is take the upper right hand corner and we're going to drag that up to the upper right hand corner. We're going to type in 1.25. So that's going to scale our building up and make it larger than the other two. Now the problem that we have with this is it's not centered in the middle of our two towers. So while all the sides are selected, we're going to go back to the move tool and we're going to grab that bottom left hand corner and move it along that red axis. Now, while we move it along that red axis, we're going to go ahead and type in 3.25 inches and select enter. What that will do is center that in the middle of our two towers. Now, the next thing we're going to want to look at doing is modifying an opening to this. So I'm going to use the selection key and go and select that front face. Now I'm going to use my rectangle tool to help me do this. And we're going to make some lines that we'll later delete. But from that bottom left hand corner, I'm going to want to drag that rectangle up. And what I'm looking for is to get that measurement to be three feet, five and a quarter inches by eight inches. And you can see that it is already highlighted in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. I'm going to go and select and make that line. I'm going to do the same thing in the bottom right hand corner. Now, if you can't get it right on the actual eight inch mark, okay, you can always go ahead and just type that in. It can be a little tricky uh, to get it exactly where you want it. So again, you can see moving it around. If it doesn't actually work, okay, you can always go ahead and type in your three feet, five and one fourth inches, comma, and then the one that we're looking for is your eight inch and select enter. That will also place that there for you. Now that we've created the three profiles, what we're going to create is another rectangle here. And we're going to draw that down. And what we're looking for is where we get that dotted line and it says on golden section. Go ahead and select. Now we can grab our eraser tool for this and we're going to go ahead and delete those top two lines. And what that's going to create is a little doorway. But what we'll want to do is we're going to select this arc tool and we're going to want to find the second one, which is our two point arc. And by selecting the upper corners, we can select them and go up and we're going to want to give this a little bit of an archway. Now for our archway, what works best is if we use eight and five eighths inch and select enter. Now you've created a little archway, which we will have to go in and erase that middle line. Then we can go ahead and use our push pull and we can pull that out. If we want, we can actually push that in. So a couple different things you can do with this. If you wanted just to walk in, you could have a walk in. If you want to drag this out and create another archway, um, you can do that as well. Um, you can easily go ahead and select that if it's something you're thinking about doing and then using that offset tool and creating another type of offset here. And going ahead and making a walkway that way. 
Um, for this video purpose, um, we're going to look at actually using that and dragging your push pull back into the building. Now, we don't want to go all the way through the building. So we're going to go ahead and just make sure when we go back, we're going to type in the number three and select enter. And let's try that again. When we do our three, we got to make sure we hit three feet um, or we're not going to have a very wide opening. So now you can see that we've kind of scaled up our building. Um, we've also gone ahead and entered a little entryway into that as well. So the next step to this is going to be actually creating um, the drawbridges that go along with this. So the last part of our castle, as far as designing goes, um, what we want to look at is creating a couple different drawbridges that will attach to those three openings that we see in the front of our castle. In order to do this, we're going to want to make sure we have a front view. And in order to do this, we need to create a profile down here on the bottom in order to do this. So we're going to go and click on this in order to modify that left castle. Now, all we really should have to do is create a couple lines in order to section off where that drawbridge would come. Once we do that, we can then use our push-pull to grab the front of that and pull it out. Now, we can extend that as far as we would like um, going out here. The problem with this is, is that we're going to create a floor that is the same as the drawbridge. So we don't want this to really be the same as our actual castle. So in order to do that, we're going to use that control feature again. And when we select that control feature, you'll see that little plus sign showed up. That's going to add new material. So you can see that it now created a line for us as we drag that out. Now we're going to go ahead and create our drawbridge. And for this, we're going to use three feet, six inches. And we'll use that for all three of the buildings as we move forward. So again, let's go ahead and take a look at our front view. And we're going to go ahead and select the right castle. We'll grab the line tools, get in there, grab the endpoints. Rotate around so that we can see it. And using the push-pull and the control feature, select and drag it out. And again, we're going to use 3 feet 6 inches. And now you have two of your drawbridges completed. The last part of this is going to be to go ahead and modify the front castle. So we'll go ahead and select that. Now for this one, grabbing that line tool, make sure you get right in that corner. Select that line. If you need to move using the hand tool, you can move and zoom back in. Grab your line tool, draw that line down. And again, we can go ahead and rotate. And using the push-pull control feature, We'll grab that guy and bring him out to three feet, six inches. Now, the last step to this um, is really kind of just customizing your castle and adding some color and making it look your own. Hope you had fun enjoying your 3D custom castle.